أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المزمل قم الليل إلا قليلا نصفه أو انقص منه قليلا أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا إنا سنلقي عليك قولا ثقيلا إن ناشئة الليل هي أشد وطئا وأقوى مقيلا إن لك في النهار سبحا طويلا واذكر اسم ربك وتبتل إليه تبتيلا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نبدأ درس سورة المزمل We're starting the درس سورة المزمل number 73 and this surah سبحان الله one of the most beautiful surahs of the Quran describing the balance between the inside and the outside of the believer through the character of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and it begins with one of the, the beloved names of رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام المزمل Al-Muzammil is actually the mudgham form of the pattern tafa'ul. It's al-mutazammil that becomes al-muzammil. So the ta and the za become fused together. So you get muffa'il, which is actually mutafa'il originally. Tazammala yatazammalu is the, the verb. Anyhow, uh, the, the word muzammil or tazammala actually means al-mutalaffif bithiyabihi, the one who's wrapped up in his clothes. Wrapped up in the garment, in a blanket, something like that. And this term is used for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, for a number of reasons, one of them is of course, you know, he's resting at night and he's wrapped up in his garment and Allah uses this as a loving nickname for the Prophet Wasallam. Someone who's wrapped, oh, you know, oh the one wrapped in the blanket, get out, you know, get, stand up, qum. And in the next surah we're going to see, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, al mutaghashi bi thiyabihi. Muddathir is someone who's covered up, not wrapped up but covered up. So someone who's covered up is more snug, they're more comfortable. So al-muzammil alludes to comfort. But al-muddathir uh, 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 actually refers, refers to covering. Or to p- draw something over yourself. Out of cold, out of fear. You know, when somebody draws something over themselves. So there's two different sentiments. In one sentiment, the Prophet ﷺ is relaxed. And the other sentiment, the Prophet ﷺ is nervous. He's worried. Afraid. Something has happened. So those two dimensions are captured in the middle of the night of the Prophet ﷺ. So Allah calls him by this beautiful name and then says, قُبِ layl, Stand the night. This is a maf'ul fihi. Stand when? In the night. إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Except a little bit. Meaning stand most of the night. Stand most of the night. This is the Prophet ﷺ's inst- uh, instruction he's been given for Qiyamul Layl. For tahajjud prayer. For us tahajjud prayer is additional. It's nafilah. It's additional. For him, it is nafila, walakin wajibun alayhi. It's mandatory on him. It's, it's, he was mandated to do it. So, nisfahu, at least a half of it. Awin qus minhu qalila, or to, take a little away from that, just a bit. Awzid alayhi, or increase it. So he's giving him options. Do at least half, a little short, a little more, or give, even go on top of that. Waratil al Qur'an tartila and recite the Quran in slow, rhythmic, clear, enunciated fashion. Waratil al Qur'an tartila. Yani iqra'hu bi tamahul. Calm down and recite it. Make sure you give every syllable its due. Watabayun al huruf. Make sure every every letter is clear. That is what tartil is. That's what tartil. When you slow down and you really take your time reciting every word. That's what Tartil is. And this is supposed to be the spirit of Qiyamul Layl. Now let's talk about the irony of this. The spirit of Qiyamul Layl is you're supposed to recite the Quran extra slow. And Qiyamul Layl became an institution in Ramadan. Because we call Taraweeh, which is Qiyamul Layl actually, we call it Taraweeh. Okay? That's something instituted by Umar radiallahu anhu. Instead of making it the entire night, he facilitated it for Muslims because so many Muslims have to work and do other things. He acknowledged that. So an hour and a half, two hours, you can be done. But the spirit of it was, again, the Qur'an's injunction for this extra prayer. The point is you have extra time. The point is you don't have the day's activities are done. You have extra time now. So when you recite Qur'an, recite it extra slow. But what do we have? How long do they take? Well, they can finish in 25 minutes. That one takes 45 minutes. We actually have speed records for taraweeh. In Masajid, how many, I can finish 20 in like, uh, the Hufaz talk to each other, I can finish 20 in like 62 minutes, flat. 
I finished the whole Quran in like a week. How much? Do you, how, how quickly can you recite a juz? Psh, don't even ask, bro. I broke my last record. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then the irony of all ironies. We get to the 29th juz. And the kids are like in a hurry because it's like the 26th night and they have to finish Qur'an by the 27th because somehow some revelation came that we don't know about that by the 27th night the Qur'an should be finished. So that then the next three nights you recite, you know, when Fatiha is done, everybody says, Ameen, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon, Allahu Akbar. Second raka'ah, Wa Salamun Ala Al Mursaleen, Allahu Akbar. Then the next two raka'ah, Walhamdulillah, what are you doing? What, what is that? Is, is this, just finish the Qur'an, get it over with. Even if we don't finish the entire Qur'an, if we just, and if you don't, you know, pray 20, go ahead, pray, but pray 20, waratilil Qur'ana tartida, pray 8, pray 10, pray 2, but pray properly, man. Don't make a mockery of it. Nobody, even people who understand Arabic don't understand what's going on. Even somebody who's, who knows Qur'an, is no, just, what just happened? What just happened? You know, you just floor it and you go. And this is not Qur'an. That's not what the spirit of it is. Musajjal. Musajjal. Okay. Well, what are the Qur'an that they recited in slow? And that's specifically Qiyamul Layl. Specifically. In other words, you, sh- you can recite Qur'an at a normal pace. Not speedy pace, but a normal pace, other salawat. But Allah went out of His way to say, when you recite Qiyamul Layl, slow it down. And then there are Hufad who recite slowly. The beautiful voice recites slowly. And the people complain, can you speed it up a little bit? That was like, you know, you're going under the speed limit a little. So if you could just step it up a little, then that would be better. And, and p- people will tell the Imam, come on, let's go already. How will they tell him? <sighs> in the middle of the Salat. The Prophet ﷺ is given this Salat in the middle of the night, half the night. How much Qur'an was revealed? This is one of the earliest surahs revealed, you know that? This is within the first four to five surahs. Some say within the first seven surahs revealed. Surah Al-Muzammil. Earliest, earliest, earliest revelation. The question is, he's going to stand there reciting half the night, a third of the night. That's at least two, three hours. At least. That's at least two, three hours. How many juz is he reciting? It's not even a half a juz yet. It's not even 10 pages yet of Qur'an. <laughs> the only full surah revealed so far must have been Fatiha. Complete surah revealed. Other passages here and there. Of something from Surah you know, uh, Al-Alaq, Surah Al-Muzzammil, Surah Al-Muddathir, early revelation. It's a longer surah relatively, but that's it. And he's going to recite that half the night, which means you have to recite the Qur'an and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. You know? You have to go recite it again. And you just made two rakahs with those surahs. You don't pick a new surah, you go back to the same surah again. And recite it again. Because the point of Qur'an is that it has to enter into your psyche. It has to enter into the, you know, run in your blood. As I keep saying. It's not just something you know. It has to enter your soul. So what? Atilil Qur'an atartila. Why does it have to penetrate you like this? Why does the Prophet ﷺ have to be trained like this in the middle of the night? Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. No doubt about it, we are going to bring you into contact. We're going to throw onto you a word that is extremely heavy. Qawlan thaqila. A heavy word. Shaqqan ala al-mukallafin. Mukallafin. It's going to be very heavy for all those who have responsibility. Meaning the responsibility is about to be given to you to go deliver the message outside. To take it public. It's not going to be easy for you. And to get that strength, you, you will gain that strength the closer you are to Allah, the stronger you'll get. And you'll get close to Allah when you recite His words calmly in the middle of the night. And then Allah starts talking about the benefits of the, the night prayer. Why specifically the night time? Inna nashi layli. No doubt about it. This getting up in the night. Hiya ashaddu wat'an. It is more firm when it comes to planting your feet. In other words, there are no distractions. There's nobody else calling you. There are no other obligations. The world is asleep. Your feet are planted more. And then, نَشِئَةَ layl يعني تَصَرُّفًا وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا Actually, no, I skipped that. الْعِبَادَةَ أَلَّتِي تَنْشَأُ All the worship you're going to stand up and do at that time is going to be firmer. 
It's going to plant your feet deeper into the ground. Wata actually means to penetrate onto the ground and step. Wata yata'u, to step on the earth and to leave an imprint. So your feet will get imprinted where you stand. You'll be planted. You'll be firm. And this is actually imagery, kinaya in the Qur'an. It alludes to something. And the allusion here is, when the Prophet's feet are planted in the ground in, in prayer, he will be, his feet will be planted when he stands by his message. Ifbatul qadam. You know, we say, وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Plant our feet firm. Well, you'll become firm in your beliefs and firm in your, in your delivery, in your confidence when you develop this relationship with Allah. That's the instruction given to the Prophet ﷺ. وَأَقْوَى مُقِيلًا And it's more upright in, in terms of speech. In other words, your, your words are not filled with distraction of anything else. This is the best time to speak with me. And also some, some argue here, وَأَقْوَى مُقِيلًا It's the most upright, it's the best time. To be speak in terms of speech with Allah, because Allah is where in the middle of, in the last portion of the night, is the closest. So the best time to talk to me is then. Wa aqwa muqilan, thabatan wa rusuqan fil ibada. Inna laka fil nahari sabhan tawila. No doubt for you in the morning there is extreme. There's a great deal of activity. Tasarrufan wa taqalluba. Wa taqalluban fi muhammatik. In all your missions and the instructions I've given you, you have a lot of sabah. Sabah literally comes from sabaha, swimming. And when somebody's swimming, they can't just... Hold on. I gotta pause this, because this is gonna happen again. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Alright. So, what was I saying sabah means? Swimming. When you're swimming, can you just stop? Yeah, you're swimming, 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 like, okay. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> Relentless activity is called sabah. You can't stop. You have to keep going. You, and even if you're in one place, you got to keep pedaling. You have to stay afloat. That's the nature of your work in the day. Sabhan tawila, a long day full of relentless activity. What kur isma rabbak? Rabbik, sorry. Make mention of the name of your master. Yani ibda bismillah ar rahman ar rahim. Make mention of Allah's name. ilayhi And cut yourself off towards Him. Tabattala yatabattalu to be cut off. It's lazim. Battala yubattilu to cut somebody off. That is muta'addi. Now what's the conundrum here? What's the, what's the riddle here? Tabattal ilayhi. What's the master of tabattala yatabattalu? Tabattulan. But it says tabattal ilayhi. Tabtilan. Tabtilan. So there's actually both combined here. Tabattala yatabattalu. We were expecting wa tabattal ilayhi tabattulan. But Allah says wa tabattal ilayhi tabtilan. And the other option could have been wa battil ilayhi tabtilan. Neither one is used, it's a mixture of both. When the maf'ul mutlaq, it's a linguistic discussion, really not appropriate for this series, but at least a brief mention is it's, it's warranted here. When the maf'ul mutlaq is from a different family, and the fi'il is from a different family. And they imply two different things. And that's the Arab, Arabic way of combining both meanings into the phrase. You disconnect yourself and connect to Allah only. And by doing so, you will help others disconnect themselves and connect to Allah only. You will set the example of how to disconnect others. And, and so it's not just for you. When you become the model of Qiyamul Layl, everyone after you will come in your own following, and the billions that will come after you, that will want to connect to Allah, will now have a legacy, so you're not just doing this for yourself. That's tabtil. If it was just for himself, tabattul ilayhi, tabattul ilayhi, tabattul ilayhi, lazim, lazim. It goes lazim muta'addi. Impact yourself, impact others. Subhanallah. Wa tabattul ilayhi tabtila. Now in this, the Prophet ﷺ, first of all, is cutting himself off from society, and Allah says, you have a lot of work in the day. But there is a connection between the two. There's a connection between the two. And we'll see that connection in its paired surah. Its sister surah is the next surah. But here I want to share with you the foundations of da'wah. The spiritual foundations of da'wah. When calling people to Allah. Calling people to Allah, you, the, the golden rule you have to, and I have to remind myself of, is مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْقُلُوبِ يَصِلُ إِلَى الْقُلُوبِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْقَلْبِ يَصِلُ إِلَى الْقَلْبِ Whatever comes out of the heart, goes into the heart. Da'wah is not speeches, da'wah is not talk, da'wah is not knowledge. Da'wah is somebody who feels something to the core of their being, and then that, that conviction comes out in the sincerity with which they share it with somebody else. 
And others don't just hear the words, they can sense the sincerity. They can tell the genuine nature of what you're saying. And that, has, that sincerity itself has an impact. You know the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't just teach the truth. He had an aura of it. There's something about him, you're around him, he says those words, you can tell he, he means them. Can you tell when somebody gives a speech and they're absolutely convinced of what they're saying? And when somebody gives a speech and it's theatrics and it's empty and hollow, even if it's identical content? Can you tell? There's a human, there's, there's something, al-arwah juludum mujannada. We can sense when something is from the heart and when something is not. Especially if you have insight, a little more insight, and you can tell this is just theatrics. This is not genuine speech. This is just a performance. And this is genuine advice. This is being given to me because someone's concerned about me. So this, but to, in order to do that, you really have to feel the message itself. It has to become yours. It has to come from your heart. Well, it can't come from your heart until it goes into your heart first. That's the night time. That's when the message goes into the heart. رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ the master of all, the entire east and the entire west. No one is to be worshipped and obeyed in any way, shape or form except he. فَاتَّخِذْهُ وَكِيلًا Then take him as the one to take care of all your problems. The disposer of your affairs, if you will. Al-wakala, to leave the issues in somebody's hand. Tawakkul comes from it. To, I'm just relying on Allah. Let him be the one you rely on. وَاسْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ And be patient over what they're saying. Now Allah tells him be patient over what they're saying. Because even though I've mentioned this concept before in, my, in the tafsir series of Juz Amma, it's a very powerful concept in the Qur'an. A prophet has two conversations. He has conversations with Allah and he has conversations with the people. And the conversation with Allah is beautiful. And it's empowering. And it's rejuvenating. But the conversation with the people is ugly. It's offensive. It's insulting. It's hurtful. And he has to have both conversations. But one conversation gets him ready for the other. You run out of steam when you talk to people. It's depressing. It's just, why, do, why would I want to do this? Why would you want to talk to somebody that insults you? What could possibly motivate me to do that? They already insulted me the day before. They already made fun of me and my family. They already questioned my integrity as a human being. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to put myself in that position? Allah is teaching His Messenger وسلم, the only way you will able, you'll be able to put your, you know, your dignity on the side. And this mission is more important than your own dignity. You go back to Allah, and you humble yourself before Allah at night, and then you will remember that no matter how much they put you down, that does not take your respect away. I've given you the honor. Honor comes from me. Now this is easy to talk about, but to apply in our life, oh man, that's tough. You, you know, you talk to somebody about deen and they insult you. You're like, oh, I'm never going to talk to that person. That person's a jerk. I'm never going to talk to them again. Forget that. I'm not going to their house. Who do they think they are talking to me like that? Now imagine, who are we compared to the Messenger ﷺ? If somebody insults the Prophet ﷺ, if there's any human being that was in a position to say, who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> if there was ever a human being who was in that position, it's our Messenger ﷺ. Who do you think you're messing with? Do you realize what I'm sharing with you, where it comes from? Do you realize the kinds of connections I have? This is the last messenger of humanity. Do you realize the consequences of not believing in me? And, and when he hears that kind of insult, he can't be just turned off and move on. And I add to this conversation because it's critical. You know, there are different kinds of people with different levels of sensitivity. So you have people that are, I don't know how else to put this, scumbags. They're just, they're, they're, they're foul mouth, dirty, corrupt people that are used to hearing filth all the time. They, they utter filth and they hear filth and they're surrounded by filth. People like that, when you curse them out, what happens? <laughs> yeah, and what? That's all you got? Now let me give you mine. And then they'll show you how, you know, they got their training from sailors. You know? But then on the other hand, you have decent people. Respectful people, respectable people, people with a decent upbringing. They go to, you know, they go to their institutions of learning or their institutions of work and social institutions. And they expect, they treat others with respect and they expect that they will be themselves treated with respect. 
So when you go into your office, you don't mentally go prepared to hear curses. Or that somebody's going to you know, make fun of you. Or say something about you that's like obscene. Or use dirty language with you. It's, you don't expect that. 